Hey guys, what happens when you combine solid aluminum and put it into a solution of copper sulfate? Well, what happens is the aluminum bonds with the sulfate instead to make aluminum sulfate, and the copper comes out as a solid. We can explain how this happens using electrochemistry, and the first way that I want to explain it involves using the oxidation numbers to see what's happening to each atom individually. You know how to find oxidation numbers. The oxidation number for an element in its standard state is zero, and so this copper also has an oxidation state of zero. The sulfate anion has a charge of minus two, which means this copper has a charge of plus two to counteract it, since the whole thing is uncharged. And these three sulfates have a charge of minus two, or sorry, oxidation state of minus two each. Thus, we have negative six in sulfates. We need positive six in aluminums, but there are two of them here. Each aluminum is plus three. So what do we have going on here? We've got aluminum solid being converted to aluminum three plus. Where the electrons go? Well, the electrons were here since this is a neutral entity, but they're gone here because this is now a positive. This aluminum split up into its aluminum three plus and it gave off three electrons. The copper, on the other hand, started as two plus and ended as an uncharged species. See, Cu two plus Cu. To do that, it had to combine with two electrons. In this case, two electrons plus a copper two ion make a copper uncharged atom. Now here's the deal. Each of these isn't a real chemical reaction because it isn't two chemicals interacting with each other. Nothing's changing its chemical form except for the fact that an atom is changing its charge slash oxidation state. This aluminum reaction wouldn't have happened without the copper to absorb the electrons, and this copper reaction wouldn't have happened without the aluminum producing the electrons. These two combine to make an overall reaction. Now, really though, we're going to have to make sure that our electrons cancel out, because I've never seen an electron in a chemical reaction. I'm gonna need two of everything on this line, and three of everything on this line. The reason is, now I have six electrons on the right-hand side, and six electrons on the left-hand side. The electrons will cancel each other out, and I'm left with two aluminums and three copper twos, making three coppers and two aluminum three pluses. This is the reaction that's actually happening here. See, aluminum and copper two makes copper and aluminum three plus. Each of these reactions that I've written in blue are called half reactions because they only tell half the story of the overall redox reaction. Later, we're going to be figuring out how many volts a particular redox reaction gives off. But to figure that out, you're going to have to look up each of the half reactions in a table. Now, you're probably going to be given a table in a textbook, but this is my little mini table that I've made for you. Fluorine can combine with two electrons to make two fluorides, and that gives you 2.87 volts of potential difference. Lithium combining with an electron to make a lithium atom requires 3.05 volts of potential difference. What you'll notice is that these are all reductions or gains of electrons. This is called a table of reduction potentials. Near the top, you'll often find fluorine, which is the most easily reduced atom of all time. And near the bottom, you'll find something like lithium, which is very, 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 very hard to reduce. You can figure out why that's the case, because each of these wants a full valence shell of electrons, 
Lithium Plus already has a full valence shell, so it doesn't want to take on its extra electron. Each of these fluorines has seven in its valence shell, so it would love to take an extra electron to get the full valence shell. It all goes back to that octet rule from back in the day. But the point is, you're going to need this table of uh, reduction potentials so that you can identify the voltage contribution of each half reaction in a redox reaction. Best of luck.